Hi, I'm Bethel Michael, and this is your Prince George's County Public Schools Update. Today we look at four school system events where people, places, and things, some of them quite small, all make a very big difference. We start with the significance of a male role model in the life of a child. Here's Dave Zarin with the story. Bowling pins may have been falling down at William Beans Elementary School recently, but the strength of father-child relationships was going up as over 100 dads, granddads, male guardians, and their children celebrated Men Make a Difference Day throughout Prince George's County Schools. As they taught their sons how to tie their ties, guided their daughters through arts and crafts, and just had fun playing games together, every one of the dads knew he was where he had to be. Because I know that my presence as a black male is definitely needed. I grew up with black male teachers in the Virgin Islands, so I think that every time our presence is needed, it should be seen as black males in the schools. So right now I'm a single dad, so it's very important that I play an intimate role in my son's life, just showing him that I'm here for any and everything that he does. And sometimes just a little time means the most, you know, and I grew up with my dad in the house, but he was so busy with other things that we really didn't get a lot of time to spend together, so I wanted to do something different with him. Now in its third year at William Beans, Men Make a Difference is not just a one-day event. With plenty of sibling connections among the 440 students, the dads often have more than one reason to be involved with the school all year long. We've seen tremendous male involvement following this event. Fathers bringing lunch to their children, coming for recess, coming to school events. So we're really excited about the work that we're going to continue to do throughout the school year. You know, there's a, a father, you know, for a reason. and. Having fathers involved and grandfathers and uncles where there are absent fathers is very, very important. You may, you may be divorced, as, as my mom and dad were, but it doesn't mean you have to be absent. But that creates a void in a child's life when there's not a, a man there. They need positive male role models in their lives, doing the right thing, showing young boys how to grow up into responsible citizens, responsible young men. Speaking of male role models, Many people look up to members of the Washington Redskins. One member of the team showed up at an elementary school recently to get the students to do more than just look up. He wanted them to stand up and be active. Grant Kittleston has the story. When Daryl Tapp of the Washington Redskins entered through the back door of Kenilworth Elementary School's cafeteria, there was plenty of people on their feet with excitement which helped accomplish a large part of the goal of his visit. Tap was at Kenilworth as part of the National Football League's Fuel Up to Play 60 initiative, which aims to get children doing 60 minutes of physical activity each day. It hits home, definitely. Having a child definitely changed perspective on a lot of things. I've always been a healthy type person between my wife and myself, but having a, a little girl now, you, you want to raise her the right way that you want her to go uh, throughout the course of her life. So. Anything you can do to help make a difference in her life and other kids, I'm all for it. Tap won't be at Kenilworth every day to make sure the kids get moving, but he did reinforce the lessons that Kathy Smith, the physical education instructor at Kenilworth, has been teaching her students for quite some time. When they come to PE, when the students arrive to my class, I try to um, find something that I know that will um, capture their, like stimulate their mind and to say, wow, this is what I can do. And most of the time, the kids learn things about themselves through the music. And so that kind of uh, um, like give me that, that extra push to dig deep, to let them feel the root that, which is growing inside of them to be active and to do, be the best that they can be. Further evidence that Kenilworth Elementary is committed to making sure their students are healthy was found in the kitchen, where a few VIPs got a firsthand account. The school lunch ladies, we often call them, said, yeah, I was introduced to a child, and the child said, what is this? And I said, it's a plum. And she said, hey, I'd like these. Let's have more of those. So I love schools as a way to encourage kids in a systematic way to eat healthier. One, it's better for them, obviously. They'll learn better. But they'll develop better eating habits. Unfortunately, sometimes, even if you're living the healthiest of lifestyles, disease can affect you. Students at some of our high schools know that, and they're lending a helping hand and some helping hair. Here's Grant again. The students in the cosmetology classroom at Laurel High School look to be going through a normal day of class, but a closer examination of the stylings going on reveal that they aren't just learning about wigs, 
but they are also touching the lives of many. Laurel is one of five high schools in the Prince George's County Public School System that is in partnership with Wig Capital Foundation, refurbishing donated wigs that will be given to cancer survivors who are unable to purchase one themselves. It makes me feel like um, I have a purpose here and that I'm living my purpose and that it is a blessing to be able to help others and to and that's the most important thing, being, a, being able to be a blessing to help others. And these kids are a blessing to me, but also a blessing to so, so many others. And that's what it's about. This project has extra meaning for Gina Simpson, the cosmetology instructor at Laurel, as she is a cancer survivor herself. It's very important to me because of the fact that I do know what it's like to, to have to wake up and know that you've changed some way from something that you had no control over. Gina hopes that her students are able to understand how they are affecting the lives of people they may never meet. I hope that they understand what it is to have empathy for someone, um, to understand what that are people are out here that want to help others that aren't going to get anything out of it because the wigs are donated and the students take the time to um, clean them, sanitize them, and then to restyle them. So I'm hoping that they understand community and that they just get a feeling of giving back. Over 3,000 wigs have already been refurbished and distributed in just the second year of the partnership between PGCPS and the Wig Capital Foundation. They actually go through a section on working with wigs, so it does help them to prepare them for what they will see once they get out of school, um, as far as the sizing and the fitting, um, keeping a wig clean, styling wigs, because wigs come in human hair or synthetic hair. So they, those are things that are directly related to what they're already learning. Just as a parent can make a huge difference to a cancer patient, so too can new surroundings have a huge impact on a student. Let's watch what a renovated school with bright new colors and new equipment is doing for some children in Capitol Heights. Here's Dave again. Home of the Brave was also the home of the patient as the students on stage at Doswell Brooks Elementary celebrated the official reopening of their renovated school. After spending last year at Berkshire Elementary and enduring years of less than perfect conditions, the 210 youngsters joined with school system and county officials to cut a ceremonial ribbon and give thanks for their sparkling new facility. Today, Prince George's County Public Schools and the Capitol Heights community celebrates the opening of a Doswell E. Brooks Elementary School, a learning environment that will meet the needs of the growing role of technology and education for our students. Uh, following the $11.7 million renovation project, it now has nearly 12,000 additional square feet of space for instruction, uh, updated finishes, an automatic fire sprinkler system, and upgraded, uh, upgraded water, electrical, and mechanical systems that bring uh, the school up to current uh, building code standards. The building upgrades, bright colors, and larger classes of the new Doswell have given a much needed facelift to a school built way back in 1953. With pictures from that era on display, the contrast with the new was even more remarkable and enjoyable. I'm just excited, excited to see all the parents and community members and just to see that the building is finished. It, it's just a wonderful thing and it's beautiful and we love it <laughs> and we, we're just enjoying it. But as the school system CEO pointed out, the real sheen of the new building will be most evident when students use it to their advantage. But it becomes about, you know, what we do in the building as much as the building. The building is important. It's a beautiful facility. It's a, you know, a great accomplishment. Uh, but we need to stay focused on that work inside classrooms and inside schools and make sure that we're providing all the support we can to make that successful and that our teachers and students are really engaged in the teaching and learning process. For the students, too, it's what happens inside the classroom and the people that are in there that count the most. If I said, take me to the best spot in the school, where would you take me? 
the the guidance room. It's really big and it has computers and stuff in it. Okay. Or my classroom. It's fun. <laughs> ah, what's your classroom? Miss Evans, sixth grade. And what makes it special, Miss Evans? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for this edition of Update. For Grant Kittleson and Dave Zarin, I'm Bethel Michael. We'll see you next time with more good news from the Prince George's County Public Schools. Thank you.